turned out there's too much blue in the dark green. Oh, it turned out blue. I didn't want oh, blue. Sure. What I did was I used Diana cream. Okay. With medium blue, and I got oh, one. I didn't. I didn't. Nice. <laughs> what a great <laughs> experiment. <laughs> so that's the cloth the, hinges. They're all the yeah. way. Oh, explain your rudder and how you can get it to stay there, please. He's taping. Go ahead yeah. and explain this to you, please. Brass tabs. They're about 15, maybe, I think they're 20,000 stick brass. And I cut out like two little hinges, and glue them in there, and then I can take this and bend it. Oh, taps. And the brass will stay right where you are. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll maintain a memory. Yeah, it'll maintain. What's the hinge system you're using here? That's tissue taffeta. You can find that at a dress shop. What is it? A tissue taffeta. It's a cloth. It's a cloth. And it's very strong. It'll last forever. And you can get that at a fabric shop. A fabric shop. That's what I meant to say. So they're just basically cloth hinges. That's all, yeah. Yeah. Now, do you put two coats of dope, lightly sand it on your surface, and then put the hinge on so it doesn't dry the hinge? I, sometimes it takes more dope. Uh, I'll dope so far, but, you know, just where the hinges are going to go. Yeah. I'll dope that. Sometimes it takes three or four coats. When, I, when, I, when it gets like a, a, like a semi-gloss, then mm -hmm. I know there's enough on there, then the glue doesn't soak into the wood. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's something. Well, what I was going to mention about that Ringmaster was kind of remarkable is uh, I've got $120 delivered on it, that Ringmaster. I can't sell it like that. <laughs> well, now, who's, who's going to buy it for $120? A Ringmaster? Look at that box bike. Take a look inside. Oh. That's what you're getting for 120 bucks. Delivery. Oh God, who's making this one? Uh, I forgot the, the guy's got his name on it inside. Set of plans. But it's a shortcut. There's no plans. He says no plans. He says just pictures. <laughs> That's it. This is 120 bucks? Yeah. 80 would be pushing it too. Yeah, 80 would be pushing it. I'd give you 25 for it. No, no, I'm, I'm really. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah, right. There's nothing in there. I know, but take a look at it. I mean, it's really. Well, someone started it. Well, you know, that's he does that. He does those hinges. Oh, he builds it. He's built, he's built it that far. That's how far he builds it for you. Oh, that's why he's charging so much. It's a yeah. short kit, yeah. Yeah, it's called a short kit. But I had no, I had no expectation. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the reasons you may not have been able to play is, is for copy It could be. Yeah, it's very light. light. Yeah, it's very light. It's composite. I may be composite, I'm not sure if it is composite, but it's pretty light stuff. He did a pretty good job as far as wood selection. Yeah. <laughs> like, here's the rudder. Yeah. And the rudder actually inserts in past the, the horizontal step. It's nicely done that way. How do you explain this piece? I have no explanation why. Oh, probably because it, he just probably added the piece because he ran out of material. I'm guessing. But why would he I'm do that? Because the grain. Inch. Probably. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Ah, okay. And he glued it on there. <laughs> probably right there. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is how. That's the way it comes. That's okay, but where's the plans? That I don't give you plans. Where's the center of gravity? He'll tell you on there. Yeah, take a look at it. But I was a little surprised. I was a little disappointed um, because I told him clearly it was it was very yeah, clear. Why it was for would you do that if it's control line? Because so many people are looking for ring. I'd like to have a remaster. I know a lot of other guys that would like to do it. Yeah. I can't sell it. I, I'm gonna. I'll sell it for what I got in it, but just you as you know. I'm taking a whoop and stuff. Unless yeah, this turns. You don't need plans when you do it like Unless this. You right. I think you set it cockeyed. Hey, Mike, yeah. did you custom paint this spinner? Yes. I yep. guess. Hey, he uh, cut four pieces of ball stock for his shoe. Yeah. That's a short kit. Yeah, definitely a short kit. Yeah. This What's was a short This was a short kit. Yeah. From, uh, this is what? That's a short kit. Really? Um, I'm going to that. Boy, it's a really nice one. Nice in this in this short kit, all the ribs were cut. You get the you get the I beam, the plywood for the center section of the I beam. You get this, this. You get the fuselage sides. You get the flaps. What what's this made out of? That's that's a, a balsa block hollowed out. Oh, okay, big block. Wow. You gotta supply your own blocks for the top and bottom and the nose. That's why they call it short. And you gotta supply the blocks for the um, wheel pants. So basically, all I had to buy was the blocks, mm -hmm. top and bottom, all the way, wheel pants. Um, the tips are all cut. It's, it's a laser cut kit. Wow. Very nice. Very all nice. the ribs are all cut. Now, is that a leather fillet, Mike? No, 
that's um, uh, epoxy. When I was a pattern maker, I used to be in the Navy, I was a pattern maker. And I used to, you know, mold, I run molds. I, I ran all those castings up there, those castings up on the ceiling there, I cast all those personally. I rammed every mold and, and polished every part. But the fact I designed the mold on R1 and at Canopus, I did a bunch of repairs on it. I was working for Submarine Squadron 16 at the time. But and anyway, we had leather fillets. Well, we had to do a radius. We had eight, quarter, three eighths, whatever. And what it would do is so that the uh, casting would come out of the mold correctly. And the leather was wonderful for doing a fillet because it was resilient, flexible, but it was rigid. And I've been thinking uh, to this day, I really have to go to a pattern shop and buy, you know, like four feet of filleting in various radiuses. Because when we're doing like a ringmaster or something like that, and you want to do that radius, it'd be really nice to be able to do a radius in there. Wow, they glue beautifully. Wait, they used to use fillets in the old days. Yeah. They glued them on. Yeah. I've got some plastic fillets over there, by foremost. Yeah, there's a lot I know. But I, I would think, and they're real nice, the way they feather out, they're really nice. I discovered something today. When I was putting the prop on, I, had ne I never had this happen in my entire modeling career. But I gotta take the spinner off to show you what happened. Look at your wrench. I got I brought my stuff. Okay. I never had this happen. Eighteen years. Plus half wrench. Eighteen of them. There's a lot of lineup. It's, uh, it's that, that wing is an I beam and, wing. And that and it's tapered. It's tapered from yeah, yeah it's tapered here, it's tapered, yeah. leading edge taper. Um there's a lot of lineup. <laughs> A lot of measuring and lining up. See the up. contours here? This oh, is not a weekend project. <laughs> the air? <laughs> the air it's an I-beam wing, and the wing is built... Wow, look at that goes from. The wing is built into the, the fuselage. You, you build your fuselage, you jig up your fuselage, then you slide all your stuff into the fuselage. Wow. You then build you, it in? Yeah. You build the wing... Into the fuselage. So you got the fuse, then you got to prop up all this everything, to that height. To get everything, everything on the line. Is, yeah, wow. get everything on That'd be a challenge. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Hmm. I've never seen a spinner quite like that before. Where's that yeah, come nice. from? Uh, yeah, oh, I don't know. You know, I don't think we can get them anymore. These are nice. I want to show you something here. Okay. See what I did, see what I did with my Dremel tool? Oh, yeah. Um, I was having a hard time getting this thing tightened down. Mm -hmm. This this would not turn like this when I got it all lined up. Wow, a little hole in that thing. That's a big problem. Anyways, what I found out was wasn't centered. Um, I put it in here. I shoved this through, and mm -hmm. I couldn't quite get it through because it's, it, this would be off center. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? When I tried to put it on, it would it would rock bend this a little oh, bit. The prop mm -hmm. wasn't what what it was was the prop was touching these two little things oh. both sides. Mm -hmm. So I took my Dremel tool and just cleaned that out a little bit, like so. Mm -hmm. Try to maintain the curve, you know. Yeah. So it, now it works. You have to coat it and rebalance it. But I, yeah, I'm going to put some um, clear on it. Uh, C8. Yeah, yeah. C8. that'll do it faster. Um, I never had that happen before. Oh, that's something else I want to tell you guys. Um, I've been buying Dubro spinners for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And one of the dilemmas I ran into, if you buy a conventional propeller, like a Master Airscrew, yeah. the black plastic ones, it fits fine. But if you put the big, thick APC props, the power props in, it hits. You know, it touches the, the cutout opening. And what I found out was SIG, the company SIG, recognize that early on because SIG endorsed using APC props back when, you know, when they first came out. And so what they did, recognizing that it wouldn't clear a conventional spinner, because they brought, SIG wasn't manufacturing spinners at the time, Dubro was. And so they looked at the Dubro spinner and said, gee, this isn't, the opening isn't the right size, and the average consumer will get them off center and get them out of balance. 